Hi everyone and welcome to this edition of Freedom Nom Nom. I'm delighted to have you here today. Uh, today's a busy day. So uh, I'm going to be multitasking in the kitchen like a crazy person because I have a bunch of folks coming for dinner. It is the 18th Porcupine Freedom Festival that is coming up and uh, that is an event where a bunch of us volunteer and we have about 3,000 people coming into the state when everything's said and done. So we have a team meeting tonight and it's uh, it's the long weekend and we had thought that we could barbecue but being New Hampshire and where the weather you know changes every five minutes I am going to be making a traditional South African dish instead. It is babuti. So babuti is the traditional South African dish. It's originally from a Malay um, origin. So it's got sort of hot curry flavors. It's quite delicious. And I will tell you a little bit more about it, but what I'm gonna do right now, now it is going on 350. Um, that will um, be... I'm gonna try and follow a recipe for a change. Uh, not really, because I'm going to kind of make it up as I go along anyway, but this is a low-carb one that I found that I tend to use as the base for what's happening here. So, um, basically what you want is you want some ground beef, you want some kind of fat to brown your beef in. We're going to have one large onion, which is going to be finely chopped. We've got some curry powder, some cumin, some ginger, some turmeric, some cloves. Salt and pepper to taste, of course. We're gonna have some beef bouillon, which you can hear the kettles boiling for. There's always some kind of fruit in there. Um, so I'm gonna be using an apple and maybe some dates, figs, or prunes. I haven't decided yet. What I don't have, which the recipe usually calls for, is sultanas. Sultanas are the yellow raisins. Um, they're called something else in America, but anyway, that uh, is not in the house. You know, raisins have super high sugar content. Not that any of this is much better, but I try. So um, I'm going to use what I have because that is life. You're also going to need some eggs. This recipe says five eggs divided and then two thirds cups of heavy cream and some bay leaves. So that's the basics for that. Um, this fat is starting to get... In this pan, sorry. I'm kind of in a grumpy mood just so everyone is forewarned because I have a lot to do today, and this is just one of a million things that have to happen. But we're making it happen, and I made a promise to myself, and I'm trying to be really good about keeping promises to myself because that is how you create great habits and become an unstoppable human being because when you are delivering to yourself what you said you would do, it kind of makes you happy. All right, so the fat, so I wanted that to brown up while that's happening. All right, so while we're just gently letting this pot roast, uh, I'm literally just gonna brown all the sides and then it's gonna go into you know, a big pot, and then I will do the size for that and whatever, and then that'll go in the oven for like uh, three and a half, four hours probably. Um, in the meanwhile, I'm gonna make this babuti, which as I mentioned is a, is the traditional dish from South Africa. For that, I am going to cut up two red onions. You can use yellow onions or whatever you have around. I'm just gonna dice these. Uh, into a big rough chop, I guess. Um, and then this recipe is actually not that complicated. It's called a meat, a fruit meat stew, I think, um, in some of the recipes, but it's very flavorful. And so it's basically a meat stew with an egg custard on top. And I mean, come on, what's not to love? So it's kind of curry warm flavors, um, turmeric, cumin, all that good stuff. So um, this piece of meat is fucking ginormous. Excuse my French. Okay, so that's got a nice little brown browning on that. 
Just gonna let that happen. Uh, and really, I'm just doing this because I'm just building up extra layers of fat that we can use to really give the babuati a delicious, um, rich base to the taste. Um, I don't eat a lot of onions anymore, and so I might cry a little. Don't mind me over here. Um, I might need to sharpen my knives too. All right, so uh, my eyes are not as well adjusted to the onion sitch as they used to be. I was a non-crier there for a while, but. Um, I just find the onions and me don't make me super happy. So again, I'm just giving this a pretty uh, rough chop. Oh, I saw on a cooking show this week that uh, I cut onions entirely wrong. So probably don't do it this way. The fancy way, of course, is to keep the end on it and then use it and then cut it this way. And I meant <laughs> to practice that and do that, but now... I am crying, so we'll just have to, oh, bear with me, oh, all right, amen, all right, the recipe, so I'm merging that low fat babuiti recipe, which I will put on the website, with a video I watched this morning earlier, to uh, just kind of see what else is out there, so that guy actually called for an apple, and I was like, oh, yeah, that could be kind of yummy. I like a little fruit, uh, you know, to go with those sort of curry-ish flavors. So I'm going to wash this and chop it as well. Uh, you know, professionally produced uh, cooking show, which uh, this is. Oh, he actually peeled the apple, and then I was like, I wonder if I can still peel the apple all the way. My grandpa taught me to do that next to the rugby field in South Africa, and... Um, it was a sense of pride if you could do the whole thing. We used to call that making a rocky. So it's like, it's called making a dress if you could go all the way around. So I might give that a, a, a I might give that a try. Should we give it a try? I didn't eat her much. No. So my preference is actually not to peel stuff because um, there's a lot of, ooh. So you're supposed to do it in one thing. So I haven't done this in many years. Um, a lot of the nutrients are actually in the skin, but I'm just going to assume it might not cook down the right way. So I'm just going to peel this quick. Um, you know, a, a sane person would have just used a vegetable peeler right now, but uh, I just quickly got all of that off there. Okay, so we can do that. This can actually, I'm going to put in my stock pot too, because you never know, it'll give it a little sweetness. It might go well with some anise and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm just constantly I'm crying. crying. I got a runny nose. So what we have here is a hot pan. It's actually smoking, so it's a little too hot. I just took it off the heat for a little bit. So there's a lot of fat in that pan. I will probably drain stuff as I, before I transfer. But right now, I am just stirring these onions in that pan. Um, I'm giving that a little go around to let it. So the plate is on three. The onions are in that beef fat. This is uh, beef fat that. Um, started as lamb lard and then, you know, I, I've made some pieces of beef in it, so it's pretty highly flavored. I got a teaspoon of garlic, uh, chopped fine garlic, maybe a teaspoon and a half of that. So we're going to let that brown. Um, brown up. And cut one of this good because I couldn't see everything. All right. Um, you know, so some people are afraid of fat. I'm the opposite. Fat is good for your brain. It nourishes our bodies. It nourishes our joints. The worst thing the, uh, F, uh, the Food 
and drug us, uh, uh, whatever they're called, some alphabet soup, did was to tell people that, you know, everyone should eat low fat. Cause turns out that is not what you should be doing. You should be eating high good fats, which are animal fats and things like avo and coconut fat. All right, so I'm going to open up the Bardo beefs. This is uh, just Bardo beef, ground beef that uh, I got in my last little order. I am, I don't think there's a lot of blood in these, but we will see and make the dog a little bowl if there is anything. She already got like two really big ones today from that ginormous <laughs> piece of beef I just rent, um, browned. Okay, sorry. I'm a little distracted today. Um, alright, there's really not much in here. I think I might abort this uh, part of this. I'm put it in the bowl itself. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to take two packets of meat. Obviously, depending on how big your family is or whatever, you can do what works for you. This, um, Onions are going to brown. They've sort of got that nice flavor, colorization going on. Okay, so. Now the recipe says to do the, the, the oh, let's see, that one's got blood. Um, to do the, oh, okay, this one's going to go for Schmelly. I have a little bowl happening for her off camera, so that's going to go in there so she can enjoy that. Uh, fresh, beautiful, farm-raised beef blood, which is also good for her. She's older. So actually, the recipe said to do the onions and the spices. So I'm going to do the onions and the meat. Oh, so I'm going to make a little pocket here. Put the meat in the middle. a little bit. So I have this meat in here, so I'm just going to flavor this a little bit, you know, a little garlic powder, salt and pepper to taste. Um, here's the pepper. And then, all right, I just want to show you guys what we got going on here. So, again, I'm going to cut up, so I discovered this the other day, I was watching some cooking show and they talked about date syrup and I was like, oh, what's that? Let me write it on the whiteboard and then see if I can find it. So I got this off Amazon and it's touted actually as the better sugar. So um, it has a lower glycemic hit than uh, maple syrup or honey. So if you are someone who is uh, mindful about what kind of sugar you're taking in, I obviously just got this. I haven't even opened it yet. I was going to try it out today and see what it tastes like um, and all of that. So maybe we'll just do a little bit of that there. Let's see what, what the packaging is like. Um, so it's got a little seal on the top. I'm just going to take that off. Mmm, smells sweet. Tastes sweet. Mmm. Tastes, um, I mean, it tastes datey, but not really. It kind of just tastes like, mmm, like, um, like 
honey maple date syrup. I mean, it's yummy. That's pretty good, so good to know. All right, so this thing's a little crazy here. Um, I'm gonna make this recipe calls for um, one teaspoon beef bouillon and Okay. So, here's the thing. I, um, I'm just going to put the spices straight in here. I know that's not the best way to do it, but honestly, I got so much going on today. Um, I'm going with good enough and it will still be yummy, so um, sometimes you just have to surrender to whatever is happening in your life that day. I am uh, stressed as I mentioned, uh, but also trying to hit my goals. So I have been doing a lot of journaling and one of the things that came up with in the past few weeks is I called it the HAM method, H-A-M-M, -M, mostly because it reminds me of the actor that good looking guy and I was like hit all my marks right so if I'm having a good day I've done everything that I set out to do which always involves things like exercise making sure I get uh, time to meditate uh, you know finding those moments in every day to take care of myself because here is the reality folks if you're not taking care of yourself first you cannot take care of other people that is just how it works and I think our society is heavily out of balance because a lot of people aren't taking care of themselves, but they're looking over there and they're going, hey, like, I'm going to mess in and I, you know, I have opinions over there. And my whole thing is figure out, like, what your issues are, make yourself healthy and in balance and all of that first, and then we can go try and figure out other people's problems, right? So... Uh, today, you know, it's on my goal list to get this done, so we're going to get it done, but it's not going to be perfect, and that is okay. All right, so the crap that goes in this is, and I'm going to smell these because I don't remember the order now, but we have, this is the curry powder, okay, so I'm just going to sprinkle that on there. Now, ordinarily, we would have toasted these, but that's not going to happen. Curry powder. Then we have... Turmeric. Turmeric is very, 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 very good for you. And everyone should be putting it in all their food. Okay. That is turmeric. This one is cumin. So about, um, and these are all, I, I did a taste, the tablespoon of each. The recipe said a teaspoon, except for the, um, uh, the curry powder was a little more. This is ginger, ginger powder. And then the last thing is uh, a little cloves. The cloves is less, it's, uh, it's a, quite a pungent flavor. So with the cloves, it's only a quarter teaspoon, which I made a little more just because uh, everything else was a little more. The cloves actually has, you know, it's got a, okay. Then, so we have all those spices in there. I'm just mixing this up um, and I'm gonna let that the spices have to cook off a little bit, so even though we didn't toast them out, I am going to leave this on a medium heat on three. Um, I'm putting in a teaspoon, like a hoop spoon of uh, beef seasoning as well. I mean, we have all that fat in there, so I think we're going to be good, but just add a little bit of that in there. All right, so while this is just getting those spices into... The meat, I've turned this down to a two for now. I'm just going to quickly chop the, um, the I think, dates that I'm going to put in here. Okay, and I do want that spice to come through, so I'm going to let that um, simmer there. So that's on two. We have these apples that will be going in in a little bit. So, what do you guys think? Dates or prunes? I'm thinking dates. So, because we have that date syrup, and um, 
This is something that does grow in South Africa, I believe. And we're down to the last dates, but you know, they're pretty sweet. So you don't need a lot for it to go a long way. I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So 12 dates in this recipe. Yes, that is a technical amount. I'm just giving these a rough chop. Um, my knives need to be sharpened. Okay, I'll try and do that before next time. Mr. Louie sharpens them for me, and he uses like an electric sharpener, so that's why it's handy. And then I usually chop my finger off one time uh, right after that. Uh, I, of course, am exaggerating as I want to do because look, I still have all 10 fingers. All right, so. We're close to time for taste testing the base. So this is a meat, spiced minced beef and egg baked dish from South Africa. It's got a lot of meaty, yummy flavors in it. Um, I might. All right, let's see what we think about this. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Mm, the apples and the sweetness is definitely going to be needed. Mm. I almost feel like maybe a little more curry. And it is, uh, all right, so this is where we go off the rails, folks. You know, I just do a little freestyle cooking here. That's the way I like to do. Uh, I think it is quite um, fatty. It's overly fatty, so I am going to strain some fat out. Um, that is a good problem to have, unless all the flavor is in that fat sauce. But um, I don't want it to be... You want it to be good fat tasting, but you don't want it to, you know, be fatty. Yeah, I don't like fatty food. It's got to be balanced, and we clearly have a little too much fat in here. Okay. I'm going to taste it one more time. I'm going to put the... Alright, so that looks a lot better. I'm going to move this away. So the dates are going to go right in here, as well as the apples. I think given the way I chopped the dates, I'm just going to cut some of these apple pieces a little smaller too. Basically, in any dish, you kind of want whatever you're doing to be more or less the same size. That way it cooks evenly, and so whatever it's doing in your experience feels balanced. And um, so we're just going to do that as we go through here. Uh, kind of tempted to just make it in this pan. The recipe usually calls for a um, you know a baking dish. I have I took out my croissette, but I think why not just make it in this? It's uh, everyone who watches the show knows I like doing just as little as possible. So um, so maybe that's what we'll do. I'm going to give this a stir. Get those flavors mixing in. So now, so this is down to, I'm gonna put it on low for now. Okay, so now you can see, if you can see there, it's got that nice little bit of curry yellowing going on. It's um, got the apples and the dates, and I'm just gonna taste the meat another time. And then, 
Last time I made this with this low carb recipe, my egg custard did not set right. So I'm gonna try a different method this time, which I saw on uh, YouTube. And um, I'm gonna bake the meat first, which was kind of the feeling I got from the last one I made. Um, and, and so I'm learning this recipe new because uh, it usually had, it is a had some meat curry. curry. Uh, there's some apple and some dates in there that gives it a little sweetness as well as sort of cumin, ginger, turmeric, a little cloves, a little garlic, uh, salt and pepper. So we are going to whisk this egg custard. We're going to pour that on top. It goes back into the oven. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to do it right when the guests get here in a little while. This dish is traditionally served with things like toasted coconut, which I will make in a little while. Also, bananas, nice ripe bananas mixed with a little sour cream or mayo uh, with some herbs like a fresh parsley or something that goes really well with it. So really what we're playing with here in terms of fat flavors are that sort of curry, warm, spicy uh, pellet sort of thing with some fruity I was cooking in the kitchen and I had the TV on and I heard sort of it was some guru talking about, you know, how to be a better person. Um, and I heard the guy say, there are no irritating people. And I was like, what the hell there are? And I like threw down my stuff. I went, I like played it back and I was like, there are no irritating people. And the guy's idea was that irritation is something you do to yourself, right? So you have a choice whether you're gonna be irritated with the situation or not. And even though I am stressed, I am also mindful of the fact that that stress is really just something I'm generating in myself. Now, of course, there are always deadlines, there's always stuff that has to get done. But how you respond to those things is a choice. So I need to make the choice right now that even though I'm, I'm you know, today is gonna be a crazy day, uh, I, you know, can choose to make it crazy or I can choose to make it calm. I've been up since four o'clock. I'm well prepared for this. I throw a lot of parties. So that's not really the big deal. It's just there's a lot of other stuff going on as well. I'm also actually, <laughs> people don't believe this, but I'm an introvert. So this was a busy weekend and I had a lot of events and I do find that cumulatively that sort of builds up in me. And so for me, which is different for other people, I have to be mindful of what that balance is so that I can continue to function optimally for me. What I hope with this show, you know, every week I'm trying to improve a little bit. This one, clearly from a cooking perspective, maybe not the best, but you know, I wanna teach you something about food. I wanna teach you something about the paleo keto diet, how to become a healthy person, both in mind, body, and soul, right? And so that is a combination of figuring out what works the best for you. We're all different, but there are gonna be tools and helpful things that'll help you become the best you you can be. So I'm gonna um, sort of beat this stuff up, but you know, for every episode, as I said, I wanna talk a little bit about you know, the diet itself, which really is a lifestyle, it's not a diet. So finding these recipes that actually are delicious and that you wanna make and that can become staples in your kitchen. I also wanna teach you sort of things about life that I've learned that maybe could be useful in your own personal life. So a little bit of that, that striving so that we can live free and thrive, right? Because that is a choice. And, you know, kind of make it a little useful, but also a little fun. Uh, so we're going to beat this one more time. I'm going to take that out of the oven. We're going to take the tin foil off and then I'm going to take that off mm -hmm. and it is hopefully going to form a egg custard on top. And that's a lot of beaten egg there. We'll grab this over here. Um, I don't know what that is. Maybe that's a salt or something. Okay, so there's that. And on top of this, we place 
three to four bay leaves. I'm just going to put those right on top and do four. Uh, I read a funny article once that was like, what's up with bay leaves? <laughs> And it was kind of just making a case for what you know. Why do people? Why are people into it? And what does it actually accomplish? Um, okay, so that's four. I'm gonna do two more because well, maybe we'll find out what that. Will All right. Be. So we've got the egg custard on top of this curry meat pie. I believe this goes back into the oven for another ten minutes. I'm going to do that now. Um, no. and um, we will see what happens to that. So I will check back with everyone in about 10 minutes, uh, or we will end with a still shot. Okay, the final stages of this babuti that we have made. Uh, this is a traditional South African meat, curry meat dish with a egg custard on top. The oven is about to beep. We are going to take a look, and we'll see how it went. Okay. So this looks pretty damn good. I'm gonna let that go there. I'm gonna see what uh, comes out of this. Uh, thank you for watching my show, Freedom Nom Nom, or Freedom Nom Nom, as I like to say. Uh, you can find more information on my YouTube channel that is Carla Garrick, G-E-R-I-C-K-E. TV on YouTube or find me on Odyssey, even better, a, uh, a sensor proof alternative to YouTube. It's a company that is run here out of Manchester, New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. Uh, is, uh, you know, we're trying to live free and thrive and uh, I like to make Freedom Nom Nom real food made with liberty and love. Thanks so much for joining me. Subscribe, hit the subscribe button, and join me again soon. Questions, comments, let me know in the comments section. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Live free and thrive.